Hi everybody, welcome to my short video on mitosis and uh, the role of mitosis in stem cells and cancer. Okay, so there are different kinds of stem cells, but if we start off by thinking about the cells in your body which are specialised. So we've got lots of different kinds of cells, uh, red blood cells, neuron cells, um, fat cells, and they're differentiated, which means they're specialised. Uh, that means that even though the different cells have got exactly the same genome, different genes are being expressed. So some genes will be turned on in the red blood cell, which are turned off in the neuron. And as a result, um, they have different shapes, uh, different reactions will be taking place, um, and so on. Now to get to these differentiated cells, we need stem cells. So if we start off by thinking about the fertilization of sperm and egg to make a zygote. So this is the first cell in the body. And because it's the first cell, therefore, this zygote cell is unspecialized. But when it divides, the cells that it divides into could in theory become any cell in the body. So the zygote is what we call a totipotent stem cell. Toti meaning all. So the zygote can divide uh, to become any cell in the body. Now, as that zygote divides, after a short while, we've got a ball of cells, which is the embryo. And these are now embryonic stem cells. Now, at this stage, so once we've got this ball of cells, some of the cells have actually already started to form uh, the placenta. So some of the cells here form the placenta. And that means that the rest of the cells are not able to form placental cells because the placental cells have already differentiated. But these embryonic stem cells would be able to divide and form any other cell in the body except for placental cells. So they're still very, very versatile and we call them pluripotent stem cells. So those pluripotent stem cells eventually could end up uh, differentiating into any kind of cell in the body. However, in adults, we don't have any of those totipotent or pluripotent stem cells left. We've just got adult stem cells. Now, adult stem cells are able to divide into a range of different cell types um, when they differentiate. Um, and those are closely related stem cell, uh, sorry, closely related cell types. So for example, if this is an adult stem cell in the bone marrow, when it divides, those daughter cells could differentiate into um, a variety of cells such as red blood cells or different kinds of white blood cells. So this word here, multipotent, refers to the fact that adult stem cells can divide and then differentiate into a range of closely related cell types. So this adult stem cell would not be able to divide and then differentiate into a neuron. So when an adult stem cell divides, it does that by mitosis. So two daughter cells are produced. One of those daughter cells could differentiate and, and specialize. The other daughter cell can remain as an adult stem cell. So from our original stem cell, we can end up with a differentiated cell and an undifferentiated adult stem cell. So by doing this, we retain uh, the ability um, in our body to produce a range of different types. It's possible that this adult stem cell, when it divides, it could just divide and produce two, stel uh, two cells which remain undifferentiated. It could divide and produce two cells that both differentiate. But the important point is that some adult stem cells will always um, end up producing daughter cells which stay undifferentiated. So therefore, this adult stem cell is able to do the same thing. It can divide by mitosis. And when it does that, one of the cells 
can differentiate. This time it's a different cell type, but closely related. The other daughter cell stays as an adult stem cell. And therefore that adult stem cell is able to divide and so on. So you get this sort of continuation of our adult stem cells. They can't keep doing this indefinitely, but they can divide like this um, for a very large number of divisions. And this is how the body is able to uh, repair um, damaged tissue, replace damaged or dead cells. Okay, so if we think about cancer now, so cancer um, again involves mitosis. Mitosis is cell division. Cancer is when that cell division becomes uncontrolled. So if a cell divides by mitosis to produce our two daughter cells, um, this has to be controlled so that it stops at the appropriate time. And one of the things that helps to regulate that are genes called proto-oncogenes. So in a normal healthy body, um, those proto-oncogenes um, are working, they're switched on, and they help to uh, sort of regulate this, uh, this cell cycle. And it means that after cell division, the cell division will stop. We also have something called tumor suppressor genes. And again, in a healthy body, those tumor suppressor genes are turned on, they're working correctly, uh, and they prevent any further cell division. However, in cancer, something causes those proto-oncogenes to mutate and become something called an oncogene. And when that happens, the cell growth and cell division becomes uncontrolled. We also see that the tumor suppressor genes um, stop working. And as a result of both of these things, we end up with uh, nothing stopping our cell cycle. So what we just see is continued cell division, uncontrolled cell division. So this cell will also just continue to divide. There's nothing stopping it. The tumor suppressor genes aren't doing their job at regulating and preventing this cell division. So what we end up with is a large ball, a big mass of cells, which is what we call a tumor. Um, another thing which uh, doesn't work properly is that normally when cells come into contact with other cells, something called contact inhibition happens. So if a cell, um, as it's dividing, it comes into contact with other cells, that triggers it to stop division. But when you have a cancer and this tumor has formed, that contact inhibition process doesn't happen. So the tumor can just get bigger and bigger and bigger as more and more cells divide and add on to that tumor. Once you've got that tumor there, there are two possibilities. A tumor can either be what we call benign, um, in which case it just stays in one place, um, it doesn't do anything else, or it could be what's called malignant. And a malignant tumor is a tumor that uh, can spread to other parts of the body. So bits of the tumor can break off and travel in this, the bloodstream uh, to other parts of the body where they can then form secondary tumors. So cancer is a result of mitosis being uncontrolled and unregulated. Okay, that's all. Thanks.